In this video, we're going to talk about springs, a variety of different kinds of springs. Uh, we'll start off looking at a compression spring, which is one of the most common types. That's what's shown here on the screen right now. Um, and as the name suggests, it is meant to be compressed. And the further you compress it, the more force or the more resistance you encounter. Um, they come in a variety of different sizes and lengths. Um, I'm going to go over to here to McMaster. Here's a spring that I've pulled up, one of thousands and thousands available. And um, we're going to take a look at a couple important specifications for a spring. Uh, arguably the most important spec for a spring is the spring rate. And that tells you how much force you get for uh, each unit of displacement. And for a compression spring, this particular compression spring, we're looking at pounds per inch. So that tells you that if you were to compress this spring one inch, you would feel 28.4 pounds of resistance. Now something else you'll notice here is that it tells us the maximum load is only 23.4 pounds. So you can, you can never achieve more than 23.41 pounds of resistance or force with this spring. And if you're, you're new to springs, you might be confused because the rate says 28.4. Well, 28.4 is more than 23.4. So what gives? Why is that the case? And all that's saying is this spring is not long enough to be compressed a full inch. And uh, sure enough, we see right here in this row that the, uh, the compre compressed length at the maximum load is 0.68 inches. So uh, we start with 1.5 inches and we get compression down to 0.68 inches. So you get uh, somewhere around 0.8 inches or so of, uh, of compression. So that's a uh, compression spring. The next one we'll look at is basically the exact opposite of a compression spring. It's a, an extension spring. And uh, the, the difference here is that instead of coils that are spaced apart, like a compression spring, that are meant to be pushed together, an extension spring starts with the coils already touching the adjacent coil. And there are loops at either end so that you can attach to the spring and pull on it. And so in, instead of uh, producing a, a, a resistive force in compression, this one re, uh, produces a resistive force in tension. So the fur further you stretch it, the more force that you'll see. The next one is uh, torsion springs. And uh, here's an example of a torsion spring here. Uh, these ones produce resistance in a, uh, a, a torsional direction or, or a rotational direction. And you often see uh, torsion springs in things like, you know, hair clips or they have these uh, just plastic clips. You know, sometimes they're used to, to like a chip bag, keep a chip bag closed or something like that. Or you'll see them with magnets on the back and they attach to a refrigerator and it's just a little plastic clip or sometimes a metal clip. Those clips are often um, kept closed by, by means of a torsion spring. Uh, here's an example right here. You can see this plastic clip and there's the torsion spring in the middle. This particular torsion spring has some longer arms that kind of wrap around like that. Um, you can get pretty creative with what your arms look like on a torsion spring. Uh, if you're buying off the shelf, then they're usually just going to be straight like this. But if you're making custom torsion springs, then you can see down here how there are some pretty creative uh, end styles on, on some of these torsion springs. A few more up here. Okay, the next one is a constant force spring. And this is one that, that most people never see because it, it's not typically displayed um, uh, in in many uh, real world applications, it, it's something that's often more often than not contained uh, inside uh, some sort of housing. And uh, the a great example of how a constant force spring is used is a tape measure. All tape measures use constant force springs. That is what provides the um, um, the the retraction motion. Uh, so if we look at this one here is just kind of a toy tape measure, but it's a functional tape measure. And, and the inside of any tape measure is going to look basically the same as this in terms of how it uses a constant force spring. So here are a couple of pictures. 
Here it is with the uh, uh, one half of the housing removed and you can see the tape measure right there and then there's this black cassette uh, around which the tape is coiled and then the next picture removes the tape and here you can see there's the the constant force spring sitting inside that that cassette right there and that's what prov uh, pr provides that that rotational motion that pulls your your tape in and in and out um, constant force springs or are, are great for when you want to have um, uh, retracting motion or you know uh, tension over a little bit longer length uh, it could be anywhere from you know uh, I don't know 8 10 inches up to several feet um, with the case of a tape measure they're often up to you know 30 feet or 40 feet uh, with, with some of the larger constant force springs let's see the next one is a, a wave spring and a wave spring is very similar to a compression spring uh, you can see that they, they do differ in their construction in their architecture but it performs more or less the same purpose which is to provide uh, resistance to compression uh, the difference is that wave springs will produce more uh, more force per displacement so the the spring rate is often a lot higher than uh, than a compression spring and so what that means is you can get the same amount of force with less uh, less area um, a, a smaller package size and that's illustrated in this this next picture here you can see there's a, a coil spring in one side and a wave spring in the other side you're getting the same amount of, of force of resistance but the wave spring we, requires a much smaller space and so a, a smaller overall package uh, the trade-off is that wave springs are more expensive than coil springs Last but not least, we have what's called a wave washer, and you can see this wave shape that is formed into uh, it's just a, a thin piece of metal, thin washer, uh, and we'll take a look at how that's used in a, a real-world application here next. Here's a gearbox we looked at in the past, and uh, this gearbox actually has some some wave uh, wave washers uh, incorporated. So if we zoom in a little bit, here is one of those wave washers, and you can see another one here. I might have some on the other side. I can't really tell. But uh, these, uh, the reason that they're in here is they, they apply just a light axial compression on the inner race of the bearing. And uh, when you're working with bearings in which uh, a shaft, an axle, is turning, uh, and you know is turning within a bearing um, it, it's it's a nice clean way to design that interface um, using a wave washer um, they uh, they just put a little bit of tension on the inner race of that bearing and, and what happens is uh, by by applying a little bit of axial compression on the inner race it pushes the balls inside the bearing up against the far wall and then those balls are are a nice you know light snug contact with the the other the other wall internal wall of the bearing and that just allows the bearing to run a little bit smoother a little bit quieter so it's a really nice touch when uh, when you use one of these little wave or these wave washers in your um, in your design um, and so I think that uh, that covers it so that'll that'll do it for our lesson on springs. If you found this content helpful, consider enrolling in our signature program at MyPipelineAcademy.com. Whether you're an individual interested in beginning a new career as a mechanical designer or a company interested in training your new engineering hires, our signature program helps students develop the practical skills they need to be productive mechanical design engineers. Seating is limited. We hope to see you there soon.